Hello, I'm Kimberly and welcome to the weekend edition of the Native News Update. It's Friday, October 21st and many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. Navajo leaders clashed at a Senate hearing October 20th over who should control a $30 million trust fund for oil and gas royalties after the Utah government gave up control of it in 2008. Tribal leaders have been split on where the responsibility should fall, and no funds will be spent from the trust until Congress designates a trustee. Navajo Nation Vice President Rex J Lee Jim told the Senate Indian Affairs Committee that the tribal government is best suited to control the funds. But Navajo Nation Delegate Kenneth Maryboy said that the nonprofit Utah Dene Corp would work better for the Utah Navajos. But Jim asserted that the nonprofit could not be as accountable as the Navajo government. He said it would be irresponsible to put such money into a new, brand new corporation with zero experience as a trustee and absolutely no outside capital. The hearing was called to consider a bill sponsored by Senator Orrin Hatch that would make Utah Dene the trustee. It's a similar to a Senate measure proposed in 2009 that did not make it out of the committee. The, Utah Navajo Trust Fund was established in 1933 after the tribe acquired the resource-rich land in southeastern Utah. A federal appeals court panel says a tax dispute between the Oneida Nation and two upstate New York counties is no longer a federal matter but could be fought in state courts. The Second Circuit Court of Appeals ruling comes after more than six years of litigation that reached as high as the U.S. Supreme Court. An issue is the, at issue is the property that the Oneidas began acquiring during the 1990s in an area that was once their reservation. Madison and Oneida counties claimed the right to continue collecting property tax and moved to foreclose when the tribe refused to pay. The judges tell a lower court October 20th to step aside and lift any injunctions in the case, but not to bar any action in the state court. The Oneidas say they'll file court papers promptly at the state level. Urban Outfitters has removed the word Navajo from product names on its website in the wake of a criticism from the Navajo Nation government, bloggers, and others who view the usage as disrespectful and a trademark violation. As recently as last week, the trendy clothing chain used Navajo in more than 20 product names online, including jackets, earrings, and sneakers. Two items in particular sparked controversy, the Navajo hipster panty and the Navajo print fabric wrap flask. The products now appear on the company's website as printed instead of Navajo. It's unclear whether the chain has extended to any of the, excuse me, it's unclear whether the change has extended to any Urban Outfitters stores across the U.S. and in eight other countries. However, there was no sign of the word Navajo on any products at the Urban Outfitters in downtown Tempe, Arizona on October 19th. The company received a cease and desist letter from the Navajo Nation a week ago demanding the Navajo name be pulled from its products. The Navajo Nation holds at least 10 trademarks on the Navajo name that covers clothing, footwear, online retail sales, household products and textiles, and said it was intent on protecting those trademarks. The Omaha tribe of Nebraska is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to review whether their sovereignty protects them from a lawsuit filed by a company that says it wasn't paid for construction work. The Nebraska Supreme Court ruled earlier this year that the lawsuit by Store Visions, Inc. could proceed in Thurston County District Court. The Omaha-based building contractor sued the tribe in October of 2009, alleging that the tribe's tribal authorities hadn't paid for construction work of a casino, racetrack, and other facilities. The tribal chairman and vice chairman had signed an agreement with the company waiving sovereign immunity from lawsuits, but attorneys for the tribe argue that they did not have the authority to do so because that power is not specified in the tribe's constitution and bylaws. The Obama administration is paying $380 million to settle a lawsuit brought by an Oklahoma tribe over mismanagement of its trust assets. The settlement ends a 12-year dispute over the Interior Department's accounting and management of the Osage Nation's trust assets including valuable oil and gas property. The settlement compensates the tribe for historical losses for its trust funds plus interest. A federal ruling in regard to a proposed Menominee Nation casino in Kenosha, Wisconsin could come in the next few months. 
The decision by the U.S. Department of the Interior will be the next step in the tribe's long-running efforts to establish a casino in the area. The Peruvian government has released a rare video and pictures showing a few never-before-contacted tribal people along the banks of Manu River at Manu National Park in the Peruvian Amazon rainforest. The footage was taken by tourists who were motorboating on the river in southeastern Peru. According to National Service for Protected Natural Areas, sightings of these indigenous people have been reported by the park ranger staff and tourists in recent months. Evidence of sightings suggests that the presence of a small population of about 20 people, including men, women, and children, in the area, and that they may belong to the Mashko Pyro tribe. However, the state agency remains clueless about the reason why these people would be often coming along the riverbank in the Arizona, Amazonian National Park, which is a well-known tourist destination. Peru has the third largest number of uncontacted tribal groups in the world after Brazil and New Guinea. Contact with uncontacted tribes can be fatal for them as they are highly vulnerable to external conditions and not immune to common diseases which can spread through food and clothes that tourists leave for them. The National Service for Protected Natural Areas has been organizing vaccination programs for local populations in a bid to safeguard the physical integrity of indigenous people and has urged visitors not to seek contact with them either way, in isolation or by leaving objects for them. On October 17th, Native Americans from South Dakota, Alaska, Washington, and the San Francisco Bay Area completed a swim from Alcatraz to San Francisco shore. The 1.2-mile swim, entitled Swim for Life, concluded the ninth annual PathStar Alcatraz program. PathStar, a San Francisco-based nonprofit, inspires active lifestyle and healthy nutrition within Indian Country communities. Fred Crisp, one of the organizers and a San Francisco resident, said today's swim was truly the Magnificent 12, with the oldest swimming being 62 years old and the youngest being 15 years old. Three of the 12 swimmers had only one swim before this, and all of the members had little or no experience on open water, especially cold waters such as the San Francisco Bay. For more information on Path Stars, you can visit pathstar.org. And that's another roundup of new news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.